Nate Brown's in, as is Damien Barrett. Welcome, gentlemen. Always good to Always. be in here, Jim. Jim and it is the most beautiful September day. It's the warmest day, I think, since about April. It's beautiful out there. Isn't got a T-shirt on. I walk in here, and Bill's got a, a <laughs> turtleneck on. You have? I've got a love bot. <laughs> why, why have or you do got you have that's, a turtleneck, like, like a big knit on a day like today? I haven't been outside. I woke up in Geelong, had an early meeting, and it was cold this morning, and I haven't taken it off. What did you have a meeting about? Oh, it's a big meeting with council and uh, electricians and plumbers, <laughs> or oh, and the boys are ripping up the lino up there upstairs at the wall shed. So well done, boys! It was a big meeting, and I had to be there because I'm the owner. Did you wear the turtleneck? Yeah, I did, <laughs> and they loved it. <laughs> hey, um, nice to see you both. Uh, of course, we're uh, we're beginning, uh, Damo, the celebration of yes. Spud. Yeah, we are. And uh, we're going to continue that, of course, Saturday, an hour and a half of uh, the, some of the more entertaining stuff you'll <laughs> ever hear because that's what he was, as well as all the other amazing things, an incredibly entertaining broadcaster. Right. Absolutely, wasn't he? He, um, he? he had that sense of occasion, didn't he? And he, and he needed to be part of, of everything on yes, air. Yes. Even when it didn't involve him and shouldn't <laughs> have involved him, he had to be part of it. But I always, um, as it unfolded and as, as we sort of got to know him better, Jim, and... Mm. and it got it to the point where it didn't matter if, if it stuffed up. And, and yeah. on so many occasions, it was better for us, anyway, for the radio, if, if he did stuff up his planned gag. And I reckon, I reckon that was his, his true genius because he, he got it to the point where whatever he said, it was going to work in some yep. form, either for him or for us. And he, either way, he was going to be happy with yeah. the outcome. Very and, nice article, AFL Live, yeah. by the way, Damo, uh, which did a great job of talking about your relationship with Spud, but all of our on-air relationships with him and just how, how different he was, but how uniquely humorous he was. Yeah, it was, Jim. And I mean, it just started, didn't it? Every, uh, it was every day, well, yes. obviously. But uh, Saturday mornings, usually about 6.45. Oh, he got up pretty God. early and he'd probably had his bike ride already by then. But <laughs> the phone would start buzzing about them, mm -hmm. Brownie, on, on a Saturday. And, and he'd had plans. And he'd have multiple plans trying to work out which ones would work, which ones may not work. But... He always gave the impression, at least initially, that he was just talking to me and me only. I knew full well he was talking to the others as well, <laughs> trying to bring me down as well. And, and then he got so confused that he, the group text messages, he, he forgot that they, there were four or five recipients on the return and everyone got what he was saying about them anyway. So we all knew it was coming, didn't we, Jim, by the time 12 o'clock rolled around. And so easily gettable too. Like I, I'd, I'd drive off, yeah, from where I live and Spud lives very close. You know, the Frawley house wasn't far from where I was. Drive along Beach Road every uh, Saturday to get to the rub uh, knife. And every time I'd give it the, oh, what about the traffic along Beach Road? I said, you know, those cyclist yeah. lycra wearing wankers just taking up one of the lanes. <laughs> Spud would go, yeah, how bad are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'd go, Spud, you're one of them. <laughs> you do it every day. <laughs> he just forgot that he was actually a cyclist himself. But you played under him yes. for a season at yep. Richmond. Tell us what that was like. There's so many funny stories you could tell uh, about being... A, it wasn't a great season. Obviously, we ended up on the bottom. But there's obviously the Brad Ottens one where Brad Ottens thought that Spud was being locked up as well. <laughs> Spud went down to get him out of jail. Um, but he had to catch a cab down there because he'd already had a few himself that <laughs> night, Spud. Yes. But one of the funnier ones I ever saw, and we're out in the track one day, and David Roden, one of the great, uh, great gentlemen of yep. uh, um, AFL football, was playing with us at the time and uh, continually late. He was just you know, 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late, miss a meeting, and Spud had lost it. Spud, <laughs> Spud had given him enough leeway, <laughs> and he goes, all right, everyone come in here. And uh, this is as D-Rod's running out of the rooms, and he has to run. We're probably over the other side of the oval, so he's got 150 metres to run before he gets to the group. And Spud's like, okay, because we all had heart rate monitors on with the watches. Yep. Everybody take your watch off. So everybody took their watch off. Now, go and put them on D-Rod. So about 10 watches up one arm, <laughs> 10 watches up the other arm. Oh, no. He goes, D-Rod, now go and run laps. <laughs> Make with, sure with you do them in good time. 10 <laughs> watches on either arm. <laughs> but you were oh, in the yeah. room, the famous, when he brought the pump. The under the pump. Held under it above, above his head. <laughs> yep. No, nobody knew what he was talking about either. Like <laughs> He's put this pump above his head and he's gone, what am I? And he tells it beautifully because he had to say, what am I, at least four or five times because yep. nobody really got it. That was the genius of Spud, as you yeah. said. Nobody <laughs> still got worked. his jokes, yeah, but yeah. they worked. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what about the time was, when... And um, he was... Under the pump. Under, under the, the pump. pump. Yeah. Yeah. It was an old air compressor that he held above uh, his head. Just and to and explain we it a bit better. No? <laughs> <laughs> well... Oh, Bill, people radio, radio craft, no, Bill. No, a bit of radio yeah, craft. Thanks, um, thanks Bill. Yeah. And Bill, we, we discovered too that he was telling that story sometimes three times a week at the various That's sporties it. he was doing oh, in the cashies. Yeah. And then 
um, Justin Kaziski came in one Friday, I don't yeah. think it was, or Saturday, whenever it was, and um, he was on 199 games, and there was, at that stage, no guarantee he was going to get to 200. Yep. And then he had a good relationship with Spud, and he raised it on air. Spud, how many times have you told that story this yep. week? Spud turned on him and, and, and genuinely had this uh, moment of bitterness that, I hope you don't get to 200 yeah, games. It's just a <laughs> getting back. What about, and we, we, we don't want to cannibalise too much of what would be discussed Saturday, Saturday but... One of my favourite ever uh, of stories of Spud, and the, the mayonnaise truck that Spud used to bring to yes. our story yep. was extraordinary. Yeah. He flew down with a, a, a group of businessmen to Barn Boogle <laughs> uh, to play in a uh, corporate golf thing. And quite frighteningly, the pilot on the way down forgot to put the landing gear That's out. Right. So they belly landed <laughs> on the airstrip next to Barn Boogle. Spud trod over four blokes to get off first, <laughs> just in case the plane was on fire. Yeah. And I'd been told this, Nave. Someone rang me and said, you've got to ask Spud about the plane landing. I reckon it might have been Lowy, actually. Uh, Lowy. I reckon he rang me, got to ask Spud about the plane landing and ask him where in the queue he got off on the plane. <laughs> yeah. So he said, gee, Spud, that would have been pretty bloody frightening then. I land without any... Oh, mate, it was. It was a crash and bang and we bloody landed and... I said, so where were you on the plane? Like, because you must have been all in a in a sort of hurry to get off. Mm. Oh no, 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 I was at the back. I was I was one of the last <laughs> ones to get off. I said, last ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Yeah, one of the last ones. Anyway, he, Spud didn't know that we had two blokes from the plane ready to ring. <laughs> yeah. So I just said, Spud, I'm going to give you one more chance to tell us where on the plane you got off. Anyway, so the first bloke rings. Yep. Spud pushed me aside yep. to get off before get. me. And then the other bloke rang and said, mate, we were all in a queue trying to get off. And Spud pushed us all <laughs> aside to get off first. Silence. And Spud goes, all right, I might have been off yeah. quicker than you. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't help himself. But but he reckons that bloke didn't put down the, uh, the wheels because... It was because of Spud. He was in awe of Spud. He's a mad Richmond supporter or St Kilda supporter, and he just loves Spud, and he forgot to put the wheels down. There, there are literally oh, purple yeah. thousands of stories there are. you can tell about. And we're only going to have uh, 90 minutes, aren't we, Jim, yep. on, on Friday when we, we do attempt to um, yeah do justice to, to what was uh, one of the great media careers. It's must listen. Oh, it is. And legitimately terrified of Gary. That was it the was other intrigue, legit- wasn't it? it was, yeah. So this big, rough, tough, <laughs> yeah. you know, 240 game. Yeah. You know, full back that used to punch on with Gary Ablett and all that. Gary would just have to walk into the room with a slightly different opinion <laughs> yeah. to Spuds, and he would change it. <laughs> yeah. As Wouldn't you it? said yesterday when we are having those uh, those beers to, to acknowledge Spud, Jim, um, he, he could have an assessment of how a game played on the Friday night yeah. um, that, that, that in his mind was how it was won and how it was lost. Gary could come in and have, have the opposite opinion, yeah. and then that was Spud's you're opinion. Right, you're right, Gary. Within 20 yeah. seconds. No, no, you're right, Five Gary. Five seconds. <laughs> you're right, Gary. No, you're right, Gary. Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. He held the line for a good 20 seconds. <laughs> all he had to do, Gary, bang. was just shift ever so slightly in his chair <laughs> oh. just to turn around and look at him, and uh, whatever Spud was about to say about Gary wasn't said. <laughs> oh, no, it was just brilliant. So we're going to have some fun on, uh, on Saturday at 12 o'clock. Make sure you're listening. 